it was either chapter five or six when you was basically saying, um, don't invest in your feelings. And I'm summarizing, yeah. not yeah, I know invest in the numbers, not your feelings. Basically. Yeah, yeah. You know, you invest you invest in the data, yeah, the data not yep. your gut. Yep. You know what I mean? The data will the data is your roadmap. The data is people. Like people hear the word data and they get lost in the fact that these are human beings. The data comes from human beings. Mm. The human beings are telling you what they like. That's what analytics are. You're literally reading how humans feel. Mm. And so when I'm looking at your stream and numbers, I'm looking at how people feel about you. I can look at the skip rate. Like, oh, they, they don't like this song. They're skipping it really fast. You know what I mean? I can look at the the uh, the save rate. The save rate means they really like this song. Mm. This is analytics, but you know what it is? The truth behind that is how people feel. And so I'm going to look at how people feel, and that's where I'm going to spend my money. If they're really loving something, I'll spend my money there. If they're not loving it, all that tells me is, okay, I need to I need to back away from doing this type of content and try this type of content. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yes, sir. What's up, man? You already know what time it is. Your boy, J. Hill, Mr. J. Hill Podcast. We're going to build a special guest here. Um, this guy, uh, no stranger to the industry, no stranger to the music game. Uh, just dropped the book, um, 10 Artist Commandments. Yes, sir. Mr. J.R. McKee is in here. Yes, sir. I pronounced it right? You did. You I did. Ain't gonna you lie. Be, like, I ain't going to as much as like research I did for this, yeah, I was like, man, I hope I don't slaughter the name. Nah, you did, you did it perfect, man. I, I mean, people mess it up from time to time. It don't mean nothing. Okay, it's all good. So we actually met before. Yes, uh, maybe like three, four months ago. It was no, that was like a year ago. We put an album out in October, so jam, that was, that was a, like year a year ago. ago. Dang, yeah, bro, time yeah. fly. Yeah, so yeah. He, he actually brought um. Uh, La Russell to my yeah. old studio, which was somebody that I really, really wanted to interview. So I really appreciate that. No, I no um, doubt, bro. What's the relationship with you guys? Because I see you, you always yeah. talking about, you quoted him a, a lot a of times in the book. book. Yeah. <laughs> so so La Russell was somebody that, you know, I came across on Instagram. I guess if that was October, I came across him early 2022, mm -hmm. maybe like March 2022, right? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, man, this dude is incredible. You know what I mean? He's amazing. So I, I DM'd him. I want to say three months straight. Like I was leaving the comment, yo, check your DM. Like mm -hmm. I was, I was doing everything to, just to you know get in contact with him because he was blowing up. You know what I mean? But I, I wasn't hitting him because he was blowing up. I hit him because we were talking about the same things. Mm -hmm. Like we were aligned on our strategy and our and the way we want to approach the music business. You know what I mean? So I was just you know I was like, man, this kid is exactly the type of artist I want to work with. Um, and so I eventually, um, well, actually, eventually he got in touch with me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I make content as well, just educating artists. And so eventually he came across my content and reached out to me. And I'm like, duh, I've been trying to get at you for months. Um, so long story short, we ended up connecting. Man, we talked a lot, man, probably for about two, three months. And we finally were able to come to a deal uh, for us to distribute his album. I own a distribution company. Mm -hmm. And so we finally were able to come to a deal to distribute his album. Um, and so I met you in that album cycle. Mm -hmm. You know, we were we were promoting this new album. And so that's the, you know, I, I got to come across your podcast um, and everything you're doing, man. And, and same situation where it, it aligns. You know what I mean? What you're doing is amazing. So, you know, we got to meet that way. Yo, how do you negotiate a deal with somebody like that? Somebody so prolific, man. I, honestly. Well, not even prolific, though. Yeah. Somebody who was like super independent. I mean, prolific mm -hmm. is the word, yeah. right? But just for the, so the people can know. Super independent, but know their stuff, right? Right. Like when you look at them, you would think that this person, I don't want to say got it, go all yeah. going, got it all figured out, but he knows he can't yeah. really just sign anything. Yeah. So when when you say I was able to sign a deal to get to distribute his project, that's yeah. really a big deal, especially somebody like him, somebody like a Russ, somebody like these type of people, where right, they're right. not just going for anything. Right. Well, 
first you start off, you got to bring something to the table, mm. right? You know, um, I have my expertise. I have me and my team, we're, we're really good at building artist brands. You know what I mean? We're really good at spreading the artist's name and, and, and kind of uh, forcing them into being, you know, part of the culture. Um, and so we brought a lot to the table, but I think it really it went back to we aligned. Mm -hmm. You know, most people's problems with the music business is they don't feel like you understand them. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like you understand what they're going for and what they're trying to do. And so that we spent, you know, two plus months just getting that understanding like, hey, Jr. This is what I'm trying to do. You know what I mean? How can you help me do this? Mm -hmm. And so we, we talked about that, man. I, I went out to his house. I kicked it with him and the family. And we just got to the point where where we said, okay, we align. We know we're going after the same thing. JR, I know you and your team had the expertise. I've seen you do it. Because that's another thing. Like, people are scared to sign a deal with somebody who are just selling them dreams. Mm. You know what I mean? Luckily for me, I had things that I had done right then and there that he could look at and say, okay, I watched you do this. Mm. I know that you can do what you say you're doing. You're not selling me a dream. Um, and so, and then at the end of it, it just came down to, La Russell, what numbers make sense for you? Because it's a partnership. It wasn't. It wasn't like you know most people in their their ideal dream. People are throwing dollars at them, and you know what I mean, and you know vying for their business. It, it wasn't that sort of situation. It was like, how can this partnership make sense for both of us? Mm. Jr., I know you need to make a profit for bringing this expertise. La Russell, I know you are. You've already built something, so I can't. I can't offer you anything that less than exactly. Yeah. Like it has to. I have to honor what you built. Mm. Um, and understand that, and so we were able to just work through it and create a partnership that worked for both of us. Yo, how so? How hard is it working for somebody like that? Well, working with somebody, with somebody like that, because like they have their yeah. idea of success. Yeah. You have yours, and like you said, it is a, it is a partnership. But most times in these situations, when you have an expertise in something, it's like, bro. Let me handle what I know. What I do. But it's like, I do this too. Right, right? exactly. Because, I mean, the person, wisely so, they don't want to change what, they, what they're doing because what they're doing got them there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But sometimes you got to understand it got you to this level. This level I'm trying to go to, you're going to have to do something different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so just, you have to have that understanding. Um, but with Lil Russell, man, as long as you can explain it, he'll do it. Mm. It's, it's, when, it's when you can't. We're, we're logical thinkers. You know what I mean? Most men are, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you can logically break down, I'm doing this because it's going to get this result. That's all it took for him. Mm -hmm. Listen, LaRussell, we want to put you on these blogs and we want to spend this amount of money that you're not used to spending because these are the results that we're going to get from it. And that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And so it was just a, a simple, you have to have a result attached to the reasoning for doing this. And we, again we're able to show him without even working with him, we get these results. And so it's just a matter of, LaRusso, this is how we get these results. Um, are you down with that? Yes, I am. That's pretty much how I went. Okay, so if, if we, let's say a random artist, because I don't want to put his numbers out there, right? Yeah. What What's an, uh, the average amount that you're spending on, like a budget that you're spending on these platforms or whatever that yeah. the artist might not be used to? Like what's the average number that you put, that y'all spending? <sighs> so, and is it, the artist personally or y'all both coming together to put this number together? No. Well, in, in the way that I do my deals, we we do all the money. Like we spend all the money. So okay. you, as the artist, you don't have to spend any money on, on this side of it. There, there are things you have to spend money on. But when it comes to the marketing and things like that, that's handled by us. Mm -hmm. Um, And it could get it could get, you know, it changes from time to time. Like in, in that moment with LaRussell, we probably were spending, you know, eight thousand a week. On, on blogs like making sure he was on all of these different blogs right in that moment but in today's time the end of 2023 we wouldn't have to do that mm. because our, the algorithm on instagram has changed and so the the reason you want to work with somebody like us is because we're doing it every day so when these things change we're aware of those changes because we're sitting here watching over it hovering over it you know i would never spend eight thousand a week on the blogs today because the algorithm where the algorithm works today the same, the the reason I was putting you on that blog is because they had a reach. Well, now I can get that reach on my own page. So now my artists that we're pushing right now, Manny Wells, I think this week alone. From Maryland, right? Uh, yes, from, from Maryland, yeah, right? Yeah. This week alone, he's had three posts hit a million plus views. That's what I was paying for back then when I was working with, I was paying the 8K to get that type of reach. But now I'm getting it for free mm. because the algorithm has changed. And so you just had to be on top of these changes and aware of what's going on. So, but now... Instead of spending money on the blogs, I'm spending money on ads. 
So every one of those posts that get a million views, I'll go and I'll back it. I'll put a thousand dollars to spread it from to take it from one million to one point two five. Mm. You know what I mean? Because it's gonna it's organic reach is gonna slow down eventually. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to keep reaching. So when it starts to slow down, boom, put a thousand behind it. Make sure it go a little bit further. More people see it. Talk you know about I mean? that though. You got, you going too fast. <laughs> it's so, it's, no, it's dope. It's good. Yeah. It's good. It's good. I just got to remember. All right. So the first question I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. is, when you putting that money into the marketing, I mean, we yeah. hear about these deals and we always talk about this 360 so much. Yeah. Does the artist have to pay that back or you take that, that up top? No, they have to recoup it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for us, we, we're not doing, you know, 360 deals or anything like that. Like, that's why we call ourselves distributions and not labels. But just because of the stigmatism that you have on a title label. But isn't that a, I mean... It's really a 360 just paying your money back, no? Well, 360 means I get my money back from different sources. So instead of just only getting my money back from the music sales, I'm involved in merch, I'm involved in touring, I'm involved in sync. But that I'm involved fair. I'm in, I'm involved in basically everything concerning the artist to make sure that I get, I get my, my money. money back. Yes. That but sounds it, fair though, no? It I mean, I never said it it wasn't fair, but artists look at it as, you know, you didn't build this so you shouldn't participate in this. Okay. And so that's that's just the way the reason 360 has got a bad rap. Um, but, you know, that's that's a, a definitely a different subject because to me there is no such thing as a, a bad deal. The reason I say that, the reason I say there's no such thing as a bad deal, the only, the only thing way I would see a bad deal is if you can't get out of it. And so, and that's not about the deal itself on paper. That's about who you signed to. Mm. Because it doesn't matter what the paper says if the person says, okay, you know what? Let's do this. You know what I mean? There are things in La Russell deal that we did above and beyond because you're dealing with the right person. Mm. So a lot of times what's on the contract, it matters tremendously. Yes, don't get me wrong. But it's about who you do the deal with. Mm. And so to me, the only bad deal is a deal that the person won't let you out of. Okay. Now, back you were saying, I'm sorry, I, I ain't mean to go on a tangent, but you were saying basically... Yeah, they had to recoup the mute. Uh, yeah, the, the so money. so any any people that we any any person really much that does any deal is gonna have to recoup that money before they see any money. So for example, if I give you a hundred thousand dollars and I spend a hundred thousand on marketing, that's two hundred thousand, right? And the mu the music has only made back fifty thousand, you don't see any money from that music until we hit that two hundred thousand mark, and then you get to split that whatever we agreed on. Mm. So after we hit two hundred thousand. Now we get, um, you know, the next hundred thousand. If we doing it fifty fifty, you get fifty thousand. I get fifty thousand. That makes sense. Like it's yeah. like business. Yeah, it is business. Yeah. So so all right. Now one thing that you touched on that I think is super important is mm -hmm. when you're putting these this this money in the marketing budget or let's say in ads, right? Is you 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 said something that was important that most people probably look over. You putting the money in. To the things that already showed that it was going exactly. to be successful. Exactly. That's you caught that, and that's why you're successful. Mm. Because that's the way it has to work in today's age. People spend money on what they believe is going to be successful, but it's foolish because you literally get instant feedback on social media. Everything has analytics. Everything has data. You don't have to spend the money beforehand. You now you spend the money afterhand. Oh, it's working. Back it. Yep. You know what I mean? Versus I believe in this because truth of the matter is. Even though you can have the best gut instinct, you could be the wisest person, you're never going to get it 100% right. And so why even risk it? You know I, what I mean? I think you said this in, I, he got my phone with my notes. It was either chapter five or six when you was basically saying, um, don't invest in your feelings. And I'm summarizing, yeah. not yeah, I know invest in the numbers, not your feelings. Basically. Yeah, yeah. You know, you invest you invest in the data, yeah, the data not yep. your gut. Yep. You know what I mean? The data, will, the data is your roadmap. The data is people. Like... People hear the word data and they get lost in the fact that these are human beings. The data comes from human beings. Mm. The human beings are telling you what they like. That's what analytics are. You're literally reading how humans feel. Mm. And so when I'm looking at your stream and numbers, I'm looking at how people feel about you. I can look at the skip rate like, oh, they, they don't like this song. They're skipping it really fast. You know what I mean? I can look at the the uh, the save rate. The save rate means they really like this song. Mm. This is analytics, but you know what it is, the truth behind that is how people feel. And so I'm going to look at how people feel and that's where I'm going to spend my money. If they're really loving something, I'll spend my money there. If they're not loving it, all that tells me is, okay, I need to I need to back away from doing this type of content and try this type of content. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about when yeah. it came to that quote specifically. Sometimes we see this all the time. Like sometimes the things that we create 
it it's not our favorite, mm-hmm. but it's very it's really successful, it's right? Successful, but you yeah. also talked about like identity in a book as well, yeah. right? Like some like for example, because I'm I can't get the exact words. Like me, when I promote yeah. my my clips, I promote things that I know want to get your attention. Yeah. But to be right. honest. That's not what I really want to be known for. But now it conflicts with like my niche, right? Yeah. Because on YouTube, or if you watch the whole, if you watch the whole interview, you understand Jay is this type of person. But if you see the clips, you would think something right. else. Right, you think something different. So because when, the clips are tantalizing. Yeah. The clips are meant to get, to get your attention. Yeah. yeah but it, I was trying to understand where do we draw the line because you said invest in the in in the data. Right. Yeah. But sometimes the data is screwed because like that, I'm just doing that to get I, your attention. I, I got you. This this is sort of like um understanding. How you will work this is the difference between short form and long form. Short form content is meant to get them in the door. Long form content is meant to build retention. Mm-hmm. So you, so the it's almost like a single versus an album. These these short form content, this is a single. I don't want to rap about WAP, but the only way to get you to listen to my album where I tell you, like let's say E for example, what what was the song where she talked about uh people you know domestic violence. Well, in order to get you to hear this domestic violence song, I got to give you this Rough Riders anthem. You get what I'm saying? Like medicine and the candy, almost. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. So you 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 use your long form, your full podcast to show who you are and what you stand for, right? Mm. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do that in your short form. You should too, but you're getting them in the door to be able to understand. Okay, this is the full of me. The long form body, the long form content. That's your retention. Mm. You use short form to get their attention, and you use long form to keep their to gain the retention to keep them. You know what I mean? So that's that's the way I would I would play that. Um, for example, I got I got a, a a good example. I mean, Manny Wells, we're using these live clips because they're really working on social media, right? But when we put out his album, it's not going to be live. It's going to be the actual yeah, music. You yeah. know what I mean? And so it's cool. The the live clips are working tremendously well. That's bringing them into our world. But once we get them in our world, we'll give them what we really do. And it's kind of like I think you talk about this in the book too. How Rod Wave had the um the song, mm-hmm. he did the remix, and it wasn't. Yeah, it didn't. Well, he would, it didn't do what y'all what which you, what well, he would have wanted to do. Right, but then he did that live joint. Right, and, and it, it took off. It yeah. took off, man. Yeah, I mean, you you the thing, uh, and this goes back to just the the analytics and not following your your gut and following that. You you don't know what's going to work. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The music business, I, all life life period is trial and error. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so when you're in that trial and error process, the people who the people who do the best in life are the people who learn from their mistakes. They they don't keep repeating cycles. They're not living the same year over and over, right? Mm. Music business, trial and error. You're not making the same content over and over. You're learning and growing as you go. But the thing is, it got so easy to learn because of the analytics. Mm. Now, the minute I put something out, you know, if I give it 25 minutes, I'm going to know whether it's going to be successful or not. I'm going to know how people feel about it. And that's going to tell me, okay, do more of this. You know what I mean? And so now my my trial and error is almost, you know, cut by 99%. But uh that's cuz YouTube kind of messing the game up mm-hmm. with the with the shorts. Okay. That's not necessarily true when we talking about shorts, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe this is from a content correct, but this is like this is a great conversation. I love this shit. On on YouTube Shorts, right. you might post a, a short in the first month and it don't do nothing. nothing. The yeah. next month it go crazy. And that can happen on Instagram too. Like, mm. you know, we're we're dealing with the algorithms. You know what I mean? Right. We're dealing with the algorithms. I, I've had posts, you know, I remember like I had posts I had like I came back and had like 19 likes. I'm like, you know what I mean? But then <laughs> it's like the two, as hell. Yeah, <laughs> like two weeks later, it took off, you know, like uh not a lot, but like twenty thousand likes, which yeah. it's a lot, but still it's not like you know, we got posts that got 300,000 likes, 800,000 likes, but it's all like 20,000 likes. And I'm like, bro, like, what are you telling me right now? <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. Like, what are you saying? So, so you can't control the algorithm, but in general, you, you get the feedback pretty, pretty yeah. instant. Especially you know I mean? in the beginning. I remember when, when like in the beginning of Instagram or like when people started really getting large amount of numbers, like, man, I gotta yeah. get a, uh, I think it was like, I gotta get a hundred likes in, in like the first hour or something like yeah. that. At first yeah. it was like that. Now it was like, bro, I just tell people just post and just yeah. work. Because they, I mean, they, they constantly changing the algorithm, but that's why I'm saying a person like you, a person like me, who's doing it every day, we're, 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 we're able to see when it changes. Like, damn, they're doing something different right now. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like I said, we used to have to use blogs. Now we don't have to use blogs because the algorithm on Instagram will allow you to reach that audience on your own. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So now we're getting that for free. Um, but yeah, you just got to pay attention. But 
the algorithms are crazy. YouTube Shorts algorithm, and I, we we had stuff we posted on there. You got a hundred million views. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's like this is it's the same content that's on Instagram with a thousand <laughs> likes. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. like you just can't control these algorithms, but you just got to be consistent. Yep. You know what I mean? You just got to put the content. Never never just post on. Never. Oh, I'm gonna focus on TikTok. Hell no. Put that shit everywhere. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. You put it on Shorts. You put it on Facebook Reels. My biggest platform is Facebook Reels. Bro. I got I got a quarter like. On Instagram, I have sixty-seven thousand followers. I have a quarter million followers on Facebook. That's how I, I go. Could, I, I never use Facebook, but I was smart enough to post my content on Facebook. You know what I mean? Even though I don't use it, yeah. And that's my biggest following. Yeah, I wouldn't have called that. I wouldn't have knew that. But I was smart enough just to know, hey, put it everywhere. Mm, you know what I mean? Because you you just don't know how these algorithms are going to work. That's true. Yo, it's funny. Um, uh, I was watching an interview where you said. Basically, um, something along the line, like how artists look at the collaboration, mm -hmm. right? They be like, yeah. man, like basically they're selfish with it. Like this is this, yeah. I'm, I'm, this is mine, and he's like, bro, well, I'm a creative too. Like this is ours, right? Right? It's like exactly. it's like so many people, artists, because I deal with this too. It's like when you do something good, it's like they want to take the glory for it. Be like, bro, come on, man. Like, yeah. is it hard when working behind the scenes and and putting have a, a fingerprint on the work, but not really getting the, the real recognition and credit? Honestly. For me, no, because I'm a behind the scenes type of person. But I think for the average person, it, it would eat them alive. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you don't get the credit. Like people, until I started making content, nobody knew who I was. Mm. I was doing the same thing. I I was platinum, platinum, platinum. I was doing the same thing I'm doing now. But I was I was not making content. I was just a regular person. Nobody knew who I was. The industry knew. Like the people who are actually in the music business, they knew who I was. But the world had no idea. And I remember making it a point, you know, to my team, I said, okay, what I want to change is I want the general public to know who I am. I want them to know what I do. Um, not not for the purpose of I, I wanted to stand next to the artist. Like I wanted, I want you to look at me the way you look right away. It wasn't for that. It was because I knew they wouldn't take my advice if they didn't respect me, mm -hmm. if they didn't trust me. And so it's like the only way for people, for me to educate them is they have to know who I am. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're not going to take advice from some strange dude they never met. Like, I have to prove myself as an educator. And so that's why I started making content because I wanted to be able to educate people and I knew they wouldn't take me serious if they didn't trust me. They didn't know who I was. Um, but it it would eat the normal person alive. But for me, I don't mind being a behind the scenes. I, when I started in music, I purposely said, I never want to be famous for making music. Like that's not what I want because I see how they treat us. Like think about like a, a Diddy or a Birdman. They're constantly getting ran down. Hey, Simon, hey, do this. I don't want that life. I don't want you running up to me asking me to play your music. You know what I mean? Like for me, that I just don't want that. Um, and I get it more now because I started making content. But I never wanted to be famous for this. Like I don't, I don't have anything against fame. I just don't. I work with actors too, and the way that they get treated is totally different from how artists get treated. Actors are 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 viewed with reverence. They're, they're very much like when you when you see a famous actor, you don't treat them the way you when you see a famous artist. And I, I know this from being behind the scenes. I, I watch how people treat my actors and I watch how they treat my artists. And I'm like, man, I, I'd rather be them. Mm. You know what I mean? The, even even their events, their conferences, every everything they do is structured. This is this is a much better lifestyle um, to me. And so I, I always knew like I, the music fame was nothing I wanted. No, it's crazy because even like reading the book. It was it was hard for me only because it was like I was talking to myself. <laughs> it was like yeah. So and I'm just thinking as as crazy as this question may it may sound, bear yeah. with me. I'm thinking like, okay, who do you think this book is for? Because I'm reading really like, man, like that's good. I mean, of course, of course, of course. All right. So so I wrote it and I, and I try to be very intentional. That it wasn't just for music artists. Mm. You know what I mean? It was for artists and creatives. Of course, yeah. You know what I mean? That's, I got that for sure. That's what I that's what I was going for. I didn't want to write it just for artists. I wanted it to be for creative spirit. So my, myself, I'm a creative. You know what I mean? I'm an executive, so I'm behind the scene. And that's what you were getting at earlier. When I work with artists, I help make the music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I help I, I help um pick the video treatments. I make the video treatments. I, we, you know what I mean? So I, I'm involved in every part of the creation of their art. But then they want to get up there and say, this is my art. No, this is our <laughs> Ours. <art. laughs> yeah, yeah. This is our art. So, so, but, but I said to say, I'm, I'm a creative. And so I'm right into all the creatives, not just the artist period. You know what I mean? This, if you want to be a creative and turn it into a business, 
then this book is for you. Mm. You know what I mean? That's 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 the in, my intention behind writing it. Mm. Is it for all creatives though, or is it for like uh, yeah. intermediate? Is it for pro- nah? Like- all creatives like so. I went to um, when I was writing a book. I went to an author's conference. You know what I mean? This is I'm a first time author, so I wanted to learn. And that's the other thing. Like you have to educate yourself. I know that. So that's why I went to author conferences. I want to learn, okay, what does the author do? How does the author do this? You know, how does the author put? So I want to learn. But anyway, while I was in there and I was explaining to them the premise of the book, they were like, I need this book. Mm. I need this book. So it's like, it's it's any creator. You could be an author, an actor, um, obviously a musician, um, a painter. Because we were talking about telling the truth, being authentic, being vulnerable. We're talking about putting yourself out there. As an author, you have to put yourself out. You have to build a brand in today's world. For people to take you serious, mm. you know what I mean. And so the book is for everybody that's creative. Speaking of, um, and I'm tying this back into the book, you helping the artist so much, so hands on in, yeah. in the creative process. And I'm still getting up there and be like, man, this is mine. It's like, no, this is ours. Yeah. Something that you said in the book that another thing I not another thing. It's only like two things. The other thing that I didn't really agree with was okay, not taking it personal. All right, let me tell you why. So, so first of all, in a book, I, I explain never take it personal, even if it is personal. Yep, mm-hmm. you don't take it personal. Great advice, yeah, guys, and you'll hear why I said it. But great advice. But because because of your reaction, if you take it personal, you're going to react in the wrong way. Mm. You're going to say the wrong thing, or you're going to do the wrong thing, and you never know who's watching. So it may be between me and you, me me and Jay. I do something, you take it personal. It was personal, but Jay's reaction isn't just going to affect me. It's going to affect everybody in the room. And so now the cameraman is going to be like, nah, that nigga Jay, he a little, you know what I mean? I see, I, they're going to be going running around telling, oh, yeah, I know Jay. He be wild and he do this. Yep. So so yep. your actions is not only going to affect the person you're aiming at, everybody in the room is now going to have a story to tell about you. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And that's going to, trust me, if you're the most famous person in the room, they're going to tell that story for the rest of their life. Forever. You know what I mean? And so now that's constantly getting spread about you because you took it personal. You know what I mean? Even if it was. You know what, man? It's just personal, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep it moving. I'm not going to react. because. And now when people talk about it, it's like, hey, man, that man, Jay, he's serious. Mm. You know what I mean? He about his business. Like, it's going to be a whole different mood now when they mention your name. This is true. I only say, only reason I say I disagree mm-hmm. is because, like, what you're saying is true. Yeah. I don't think, and I don't have my phone, guys, so bear with me. I got my notes written down, guys. Yeah. But um, I don't think... Taking it personal mm-hmm. is a direct correlation of how you react to something because you take it personal. Okay, I don't think those two are synonymous, and I yeah. say that because I, I I suggest that you do take it personal. You want right? to use that as fuel. Like, come on, man. Yeah, you, like, you know exactly fuel. what I'm going. Yeah. But just because you take it personal does not mean that you have to react, react. in a in a way. Okay, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm with you there. Like, take it personal internally. Not externally. For sure, 100%. I, I get that. I 100%. mean, my, my no's are the reason I'm here today. You know what I mean? Like, mm. when people told me no, that's what forced me into yeah. being an entrepreneur in the music industry versus just being an executive. Come on, man. You know what I mean? Because in the beginning, I started learning about the business. And I, okay. But I only started learning about the business because they wouldn't give me the opportunity. Come on. They t- I had my first artist. We were blowing up. We were the biggest artists on MySpace after Soldier Boy. So it was Soldier Boy, which Kyle Park came and got him, and then it was us. It was an artist named The Joker. So all the labels came to us. But the difference was Kyle Park was independent. Mm. He was a production company. So he he grabbed Soldier Boy and took him to Interscope. We didn't have no intermediate. Damn. So all all it was was this this country artist and this country nineteen year old. <laughs> and so it's like. I'm not signing them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't have, you know what I mean? And we would have had a middleman to be somebody who they respected. We would have got a deal. But because it was just us, nobody wanted to give us a deal because we did Look at me. I'm 19. They don't, I don't know what I'm doing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I, they, they was looking like, how did he get this artist this big? You know what I mean? mm-hmm. But but so they wouldn't give me the opportunity. I was just too country, too raw, too, too young, you know what I mean? Too stupid. You know, all of the all of these things, right? All of the above. But because of that, I was forced into a situation where I had to figure out. Well, how do we make money off of this? I had already built the hype. We were already huge, but we wasn't making no money because I thought that you had to be signed to a label to sell your music. I was unaware that you could do it independently. And so I actually ended up finding TuneCore. And so when I found TuneCore, I was and, and uh, God, I didn't even notice Tagazi, who owns Empire, told me because Gazi worked in, in distribution before he started Empire. 
Um, I was the first person to put a mixtape on iTunes. Mm. Prior to me, there was no hip hop on iTunes that was independent. And so I didn't know that. But at the time, I was like, man, I had to find a way to make money off this music. We huge. So I put it on iTunes through TuneCore. And I remember, bro, I checked my TuneCore account like a week later. It was like 2,500 in there. Mm. I said, ooh, I said, what is this? I said, okay, cool, 2,500. I come back the next month, bro. It's 30 bands in there. The first month. Wait, wait. How many streams? That's got to be a that's, lot It of wasn't streams. streams. This, is, this is when we were strictly selling music. Okay. It was iTunes. First month. Month one of us being on iTunes. 30 bands. Mind you, I wasn't even promoting that we were on iTunes. Mm. I just put it up. You know what I mean? The first month. 30, now, I just told you I was I, uh, under 21. I might have had just turned 21 by this time. Because we started when I was 19. So by this time, I might have had turned 21. I was 21 years old. Mississippi ain't had no money. Ain't had nothing. Apartment didn't have no furniture. 30 bands. Do you know what that looked like to you? <laughs> 30. It looked bro, like had, over 100. It looked like I, over 100. I had never <laughs> had 30 bands to my name in my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? 30 bands month one. But it didn't stop there. Month two, 30 bands. Mm -hmm. Month three, 30 bands. By the, by the time it was, by the time, well, first, it never ended. I, we still getting money from that to this day. But by the time, like, I kind of picked my head up, I was rich in my mind. Mm. I'm sitting six figures, you know, in my account. And, and it's so it was so crazy because right at that time, Joker went to jail. Mm. And so it was like, we couldn't, we couldn't grow it mm. because he was gone. He, you know, he had, this, I, don't, I don't know, he did like a year and a half, two years. Um, but by the time he got out, I had signed K-Camp. But so I didn't we never got to capitalize on that, but end up capitalizing with K Camp. Yeah. And that's another thing you talk about about how uh like just the the, the gap uh between like K Camp chilling, right? Yeah. If you again, yeah. cause I I talked to K Camp about this, it's funny. Yeah. About like K Camp chilling for the public eye, right? He still yeah. is working. He's still well, working. If, if you wasn't paying attention, you would have thought that was the exactly. case. Yep. But he yeah. was working the whole time. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But like to the public eye, you would think he's right. he's not he doing nothing. And then, like you said, that's the power of content. Yeah. Some random chick just did a do dance. a dance on TikTok, yeah. and he's like one of the. I think he 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 was like one of the first people. Well, he he was the biggest trend ever at yeah, that time. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah, the biggest trend. Like ever. they had a whole situation where they was like he was trying to get like a a deal with them. Like it was a whole situation yeah. that was a big deal. It was, it was huge, man. But the point I was making is that the energy you put out will eventually come back to you. And so if you consistently put energy out, at some point it's going to pay off. You may not be responsible for it. And that's how it works. Like, you know, God works in mysterious ways. You know how they say yeah, that? Yeah, facts. Bro, you don't know where it's going to come from, but it won't come from anywhere if you're not putting energy out. I wanted to ask you this about that specific yeah. point that you made. In this world full of like IG and not mm. Instagram, but instant gratification, right? Yeah. In, in this world, people are full of like just want instant gratification. Is it a time stamp on how long you should wait because you could it's like man do you give yourself a day like man if it don't work by this time or do you continue to chase this dream dream yeah, when it seems like it ain't i working? mean people have to understand that anything that you want to become a professional in it takes at least 10 years okay you know what i mean it, i gave it 12 yeah it, well, well you keep going so <laughs> I, I so this is something not that me I, per, i'm just curious no, no, I, I get what you're saying this is something that i also didn't realize until i looked back on it I started when I was 19 years old. I didn't get my first major success until I was 28. Mm. I was 28 years old when K Camp blew up. Mm. Like all the way blew up. Like I signed up when I was younger than that, but it took some time to blow up, right? I was tw so it took me 9 years of being in the industry to get my first major success. You know what I mean? Like anything like if you're talking about the NBA, NFL, they start training when they're 7, 8 years old. They don't become professional until they're 19, 20. Yep. That's 10 years. A doctor. A doctor takes 10 years of school before he becomes a doctor. Like every everything you want to do that's going to be professional, you're going to need at least 10 years in it before you get to that point where you're like certified. You're good to go. So I, I don't I don't think anybody should ever stop. I think the two main reasons people quit is because they number one, they're not planning. The main reason number one, they're not planning. And so they have this goal. But they don't. But they're not paying attention to the mark, the milestones along the way. Mm. My goal is to have five million monthly listeners, but I only have twenty thousand, so I quit. But the problem is, if you would have had a plan to get you to that twenty thousand, you would have now had metrics. So it's like, man, I executed my plan and I got to twenty thousand. 
Now I know what it takes to get to twenty thousand. Okay, how can I how can I five X that to get to a hundred thousand? Okay, boom, I executed the plan. I only made it to eighty thousand, but I made it a lot of steps further. So now when I have these metrics in place, I can see the, I can see the success. I can build confidence. In order to win in this world, the number one thing you need is confidence. Mm, if you if you don't believe in a dream, if you're not confident that you can do it, you're never gonna make it. And what those milestones and those metrics give you. It's confidence. Like if I go from twenty to eighty thousand, I'm like, oh, I can do this. You know what I mean? But if I never, if I never had a plan and and never went through my plan and saw the metrics of, okay, I went A to Z and got here, I never would have knew like what it took to get there. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have any confidence. I'm like, man, I did everything I could. I only made a twenty thousand followers. I'm, a, I mean, twenty thousand monthly listeners. I'm a failure. But if you would have had a plan and made a twenty thousand monthly listeners, you was like, oh. That's what it takes to get there. It's, Let me go to the next step. It's funny because outside of the, you said it, because yeah. I wouldn't say message. I was just telling my daughter that. I said, is the the plan per se yeah. the the preparation? Yeah, preparation builds confidence. It's funny because mm, we yeah. just had a goal of like eighty five videos a month, right? Okay, and to me, like to everybody else, like that's crazy. To me, it was easy yeah, because so we had three videos, three posts a day. We had a plan, yeah, and like we literally already had a plan in place. We talked yeah. about. It, I looked at it. I like. All right, but we're going to do eighty five a month right. because it was already there, right? So, it's, right. so that, bit, that because I was I was prepared to do it, I was already doing it. It was yeah. I, I was confident that I could do eighty five a month, and I was yeah. telling my daughter, "Well, anything you do, if you prepare, right, yeah. it won't be she does dance. It won't be a uh, yeah. I don't know if I make I'm gonna make cuts today. Well, I hope so. It wouldn't be a yeah. hope so. I'm like, yeah, I know because you prepared for the, you prepared the moment. For it. Yeah. Well, I mean, even with your with your plan at eighty five a month, right? You execute that plan and you see where it gets you. And so now once you see where it gets you, the, the reason a plan is so important, because you're never going to flawlessly execute a plan. There are going to be, you know, uh, speed bumps along the way. This go wrong, that go wrong, this will go right, that go right. So the, the reason that the plan is so important is because once you have executed, you can then look and see where did it get me? Mm. You know what I mean? And then you're going to create a new plan. Your first plan or any plan is never going to take you to the promised land. Mm. It's, it's I, I made a plan. I executed a plan. Okay, it got me here. Now I know, okay, let me put together another plan to take it the next steps further. You know what I mean? And so that, that's that's why plans are important. People people have to understand that the main point of a plan is to create is to create that metric of that how far it got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because because once you can every everything in life, bro, everything in life is just a matter of what's the word I want to say? Everything in life is just a matter of steps and trial and error, mm. right? So this plan is my steps to get from A to Z. Once I get to A to Z, I know what it takes. I, I don't know how to put it other than that because I feel like I'm saying the same thing over, but that's why that's why I plan. Mm. I put together plans just to see how far I can get with this plan so I can know what the next plan is, mm. what the next steps are. How do you, like, so for example, for the listeners, right, um, how are you measuring how do you measure the analytics if you don't know how? I guess exactly. right because that yeah. it is the analytics is a big deal. Yeah. How do you measure that well, if you don't know? You hire somebody like no, no. I mean, it, in music, it's it's a little simpler, right? In music, is simply I put out the content, I watch the analytics on the streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if, if I put out the content and it moves the streaming platforms, um, so let's say I, I put out a piece of content, you know, it gets a hundred thousand views. And, you know, streaming platforms and analytics are a couple days behind. Two days later, when I look at the analytics and the song went from 150 uh, streams a day to 1,000 streams a day, I know that that piece of content I put out a couple of days ago worked. Mm. So what it, that means to me is now I have to promote that piece of content. Mm. I had to put the money behind that piece of content and spread that content. So a music business is pretty simple. I'm watching the analytics. Anytime I see the streams go up, I go to find out what piece of content did it. Because sometimes it might not be my content. It might be something somebody else did. Mm. user generated content. So music is pretty simple. It's just did the content move the streams? So I'm watching the I'm watching the streams. If I see the streams do a significant jump, I go find that content. You know that. So that's it's really that simple. Then from there, it's like, what do you do next? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's that's basically digital marketing, right? Whatever comes next is is all digital marketing. But um, I, I don't think I don't think you need to hire anybody to read your analytics. You mm -hmm. can pretty much see okay the the streams jumped. Y'all yeah, hear this um. Uh, this title music music exec get thrown away. Just yeah, just pivoting for a second. I I hear that word get thrown around a lot. Right. right. What does that actually mean? Because I really don't know. Just curious. Right. I mean, a music executive. 
I believe the the title initially was for somebody who works at a label. Mm. You know what I mean? So an executive is is just somebody who oversees some some part of the process of the business, right? Because you know, executive isn't a word exclusive to music. Mm. Um, executive is just a person who oversees a part of the business, and so a music executive oversees some sort of part of you know the business at the label. So I could be a product manager at a label. And I'm a music executive. You know what I mean? Um, product manager is basically just the the person who manages the artist at the label. So the artist might have a personal manager, and then they have their manager at the label. They're called a product manager. So anybody that that oversees a part of the business at the label could say that they are a music executive. Um, now, if you're independent and own your own thing, you could say you're a music executive. But most people will say I'm a label owner or I'm a manager um, versus using music executive. But I, I don't think titles, you know, are as important as they once were because now everybody has a title. You know what I mean? You go on Instagram. Instagram prompts you to put a title in. It's like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, I'm a, you know what I mean? So everybody has a title now. Plan, not devil's advocate, but just being fair and understanding our mm-hmm. growth, right? Yeah. It's still another layer or level of people who aren't there yet like we once were. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's easy, like hindsight it's always 2020, right? It's yeah. easy for us to say labels don't matter when it's some guys, young women and men out there who don't have nothing going on. They just trying to get in the same room, right? Yeah. For those people, I'm just curious. Right. We always say, don't take it personal as business, which I understand, right? Yeah. But we, those guys, because I was one of them, before yeah. I started getting in the room to start talking to people, I didn't understand the business side of it, mm-hmm. right? I would, I would say things like, Man, a bunch of gatekeepers, man. They don't want us yeah. to win. How do they separate? And you can even help me. How do we separate the business mm-hmm. part of it from like trying to get an opportunity? Because like if, if somebody had a million streams and they lit, you're gonna take the you gonna take the call. Mm-hmm. As long as it makes sense. I mean, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But if you don't got no motion, I ain't taking the call. And for that person that that, that feel like he has the feel like he got the keys to success and he can make it, it's yeah. like, man, they don't, man, they hating that, that, they gay, gay, gay Right. Keepers. I mean, people say that labels don't matter because now you can take the opportunity into your own hands. Mm. You know what I mean? The reasons that labels were so prominent, you know, 10, 15 years ago is because they control media. And media is the only way to get in front of the masses. You know what I mean? If I make a song, how do I get everybody to hear it? I have to go through media. At that point, we were talking about 106 and Park and, you know, the radio stations, right? That's that uh Target, the 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 thing at the, the little, you know, the little the box kiosk. at Target, yep. the kiosk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, they controlled that. You know what I mean? Literally, like 106 and Park, that was just paid. Like, okay, 20,000 for slot number nine. You know what I mean? So they they controlled that media, right? Well, now we are live in a social media era. Labels have zero control over what you see on social media. Mm. You know what I mean? Actually, the more control would be the actual social media platforms. They have more control than the labels do. Um, but lucky, Labels got the money, though. Yeah, but the thing about it, the I, a minute ago I told you about three pieces of content from Manny that did a million plus views. Those content cost nothing. Mm. Literally, he shot it for free. You know what I mean? Um, we didn't spend any money on it for it to hit a million views. That was organic. Mm. We spent money on it after it slowed down. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So... Why, why would I need to chase a label when I can post something that I went and shot on my roof and it get a million views? Now a million people heard my songs, my streams go up. If you look at Manny's streams right now in this very moment, it looks like a rocket ship. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just straight up. And so with that being said, who, what label do I need in this moment? Mm. Now the thing is, when you do get to the point where you need that further exposure, you can either A, figure it out and hire your own people, or you can go to them now with leverage. Because as before, when you didn't have no motion and they did let you in the room and they did say, oh, they're really tight, I want to sign you, you have to accept whatever deal they offer you. But if I come in a room and my streams look like this, now we can talk a different conversation. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I have leverage. I built something. Me and LaRussell's conversation was different because he had built something. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And so it's not that labels don't matter. It's just that you don't need them mm. the way that you did. But I needed a label in 1990 because that was the only way I was going to get on 106 and Park in, in TRL. You know what I mean? I'm not getting on TRL as an independent artist in 1990. But in today, you know, TRL is YouTube. I can put my own video on YouTube. I don't need you for that. Mm-hmm. And so that's why that's why people say labels don't matter. Mm. Yo, so I think you, you, you um, we got to wrap up soon, but I, something that you said that was so dope, I say it all the time, like, basically, like, if you want to become something, then, like, 
You have to be it. You first have to be it. Yeah, the you... word the word become is be. If you be it, you'll become it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so even when people tell me they want to be an A and R, I'm like, go be an A and R. I wish my guy was here, man. He he, yeah. he uh, seven shout out to seven. He always said he want to be an A and R. I told him the yeah. same thing. I said, bro. You just got to do it, right? Yeah, you got to do it. Anybody want to start a podcast, anybody, and it might sound cliche, but like if you want a TV show, you yeah. literally can create a TV show with your iPhone. It's no right. excuses. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's no excuses. I'm glad you said that because this can be a great marker for me. I'm I'm creating a TV show right now mm-hmm. for, for YouTube. And, you know, I'm talking to my producers and they were just, they were talking about the TV shows that they're working on now. And one of the reasons they want to do the TV show with me is because we don't need anybody's permission. Mm-hmm. Like the things that they have to go through to get things done on, on their platform They'll never have to go through that with me. I don't need anybody's permission to shoot my content and put it on YouTube. And so hopefully uh, we can take this clip 12 months from now when I have no, 100,000 subscribers on my TV show. Oh, yeah. But but yeah, you don't need permission. You want to be an A&R, be an A&R. All the an A&R does is find talent. Why do you need somebody's permission to go find talent? You don't. <laughs> go find it on yourself. On your exactly. own, you know what I'm saying? And pitch it to people. Send them DMs, whatever. Exactly. But now, man, I appreciate you. Uh, this is great. We could do easily another, like, two hours. Honestly, <laughs> I swear, because yeah. I'm like I'm into this. For sure. Um, I appreciate you for pulling up. Uh, 10 Artist Commandments. Any uh, missed opportunities that you wanted to push that we didn't hit on? No, I mean, I just want people to get the book. Um, I basically wrote the book because times were changing so much, like, you know, two years ago, we were dependent on playlists. Year after that, we were dependent on TikTok. And this year, you know, honestly, we're just dependent on short form content, period, posting across TikTok, IG, Facebook, everywhere. Not just because TikTok algorithm has pretty much slowed down. So it's like it just keeps changing. Mm. And, I, and I wanted people to understand no matter what era you're in, no matter what's going on on social media, follow these principles and you can be successful. Mm. Because if, it, if you write a book today on how to be successful in media is not going to matter in 12 months because it's going to be totally different. Mm. So I wanted to give them the principles that no matter what happens next, you follow these principles and you can be successful. Something yeah. blue, like a blueprint, something that's concrete. Yeah, something that's concrete. And that's for that's for any creative. That has nothing to do with just music. Like any creative that's looking to, number one, sell their work. They're, they want to make it a business. This book is for you. You mm. go read this book. You get the 10 principles on how to create success in business. And I ain't just saying it, man. I stopped on chapter seven. I'm almost done. I think it's like, what, 10, maybe yeah, it's 11? 10, chap- so it's three more chapters left. Yeah. Okay. So it's not 11. Well, because the, the, uh, it's a chapter before it's the first one. It's an introduction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. come on, man. If I, if, I, if I could do it, man, you guys can do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, JR McKee, man, I appreciate you again. Yeah. Uh, for the people that don't know, tell them how to follow you and everything. Right. Well, first of all, you can get the book on Amazon. It is the number one selling book in the music business right now. So I'm very proud of that very happy and obviously for me that just means that people are attracting to the message mm-hmm. you know what i mean so i'm very happy about that you can get the book on amazon um you can follow me on instagram at jr mckee m-c-k-e-e dot c-o jr mckee dot co um yeah follow me man keep up with everything i have going on my page is full of information of how to help independent artists musicians entrepreneurs so yeah definitely follow me man if you're interested in learning the business i'm the guy to follow and, man, before we get out of here, man, I just want to uh, leave some a small nugget, man. Don't let these paperbacks um, discourage you, bro. Like, I uh, I got into reading. I got yeah. into listening uh, a couple years back. And, like, you know, it's so easy for people to say what you should do, what you shouldn't do. But it, as long as you get the information and knowledge. Yeah. I, I I bought the uh, audio book. You feel yeah. me? So if that's what you got to do, if you if you don't, if, if reading not for you, it wasn't for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I got the audio book with the same information. Um, Don't let the paper the paperback. Yeah. Discourage you, I got, fellas. I got a genuine question because I, I I definitely worked very hard on that audio book and, and I got it scored. How did you feel about the scoring, the music in it? Like, how did you feel about hearing the audio book from that perspective? The music in it made it um more like a like an easy listen, honestly. Okay, to keep good. it hundred. Like it was yeah. like it was like refreshing. I don't know. Like once I heard it, it was like oh, it, it didn't yeah. feel like a lecture because it yeah. like because. It, again, it's Ten Commandments, so it's it's almost like a like teaching. Right. So it can get like boring at times. Yeah. But when I heard the music, it, it almost refreshed me. Refresh me. It, it's yeah. weird. It's like it's yeah. like I heard the music. I, it was like, <laughs> yeah, bro, I love it. Like I, I um, so my my best friend, um, Big Fruit, he was my business partner in Family Ties Entertainment. That's where the Joker was signed, KK was signed. So like Money Baby, he produced it. Um, mm-hmm. he's produced for everybody. Um, but he scored the book for me, man. And when I first heard, I was just amazed. Yeah. I was like, bro, you just you turned my book into a movie, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I can't express the feeling enough because, like, really, I really mean the fact that you asked me that question because yeah. I was thinking about it. Yeah. It really was like, 
like a, a breath of fresh air, like because yeah. like, oh, like you listen, it. it's like okay, 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 but then you hear the music, it's like yeah, and it reset I love me. That, yeah, man. yeah, so now nah, it was that. dope. It was dope, and, and that's why I tell people, bro, because like it's so people always look down on what you're doing, but it's yeah, bro, man, look, as long as you're getting the knowledge, that's all that matter, bro. Yeah, that's all that matter. Man. I appreciate you, Jay. Nah, no problem. I yeah. appreciate you, brother. Uh, Jay Hill podcast, Jay Hill. It's a wrap. That's all we got, man. We out. <laughs>